my Lords, I must begin by thanking your Lordships for the warmth of the welcome I have received here. And I wish in particular to thank my sponsors, the noble Baroness Lady Wormsley and Lady Finlay of Clandac, both of whom have provided me with valuable advice. I also wish to thank the staff of this House who have been unfailingly helpful and who have quite literally steered me in the right direction on many occasions. Indeed, I think my fitness has improved since I came here uh, because of the uh, needless lapse of the building and the climbing, uh, fruitless climbing of the wrong stairs. <laughs> My Lords, I wish to speak in, this, I speak in this debate with a mixture of emotions, pride, humility and considerable trepidation. I am one of a growing number of members of, of your Lordship's House who have been members of the devolved assemblies and parliaments, and in my case I remain a member of the National Assembly for Wales only for the next four weeks. It has been a great honour to represent my constituency, Cardiff Central, for the last 12 years. And Cardiff is a beautiful city with a strong and distinctive culture. Of course, there have been and are several members of Your Lordship's House who come from Cardiff. However, I believe I'm the first Liberal or Liberal Democrat peer from Cardiff since D.A. Thomas. He was briefly MP for Cardiff in 1910 and became Baron, later Viscount Ronda, in 1916. He survived the sinking of the Lusitania, so I'm hoping I have similar survival skills. <laughs> I am, of course, a member of a political party, the Liberal Democrats, who have, until recently, been in opposition for many years. I believe it was my noble friend, Lord Ashdown, who once said about those years in opposition, the first 60 years are the worst. <laughs> um, however, it is important to note that in both Scotland and Wales, we have been part of coalition governments in the meantime. Indeed, I was honoured to be Welsh Minister for Culture from 2000 to 2003, and it's that experience I will draw on in this debate today later. As a historian by training, I am more than a little intimidated by the history and traditions of your Lordship's House. In contrast, in the Welsh Assembly, we have literally been creating our own history in the last 12 years, and speaking on the day when they are counting the votes of the referendum on further powers for that Assembly, I'm hoping there will be the opportunity to create even more tradition there. Now, noble lords will be pleased to hear that one of, the one of the disciplines I learnt in the Welsh Assembly was that of brevity. So I am going to proceed rapidly now to the topic of this debate, and I wish to thank my noble friend, Lord Clement Jones, for bringing forward the bill today. I come from what is popularly known as the land of song. But the 2003 Licensing Act has made it considerably more difficult for that song to be heard by an audience. As Minister, I introduced culture strategy, creative future, and it emphasised the importance of music in the cohesion of communities and for our tourism industry and economy in general. We plan to increase opportunities for professional musicians, to reinvigorate amateur and semi-professional community music organisations such as choirs and brass bands, we plan to strengthen the infrastructure of small venues for the performance of all types of music. However, the Licensing Act 2003 proved a hindrance to those ambitions. Your Lordships will be well aware of the reputation of the Welsh National Opera, BBC Orchestra of Wales. What Your Lordships may not be aware of is that those very renowned organisations also tour extensively in Wales in small groups to small venues, to churches, village halls, schools, youth centres. They're funded by the Arts Council Wales to do so in order to inspire our young people, in order to provide community cohesion in deprived areas and to provide entertainment in rural areas that get very little else in terms of entertainment. Now, Arts Council Wales has a very long-established and highly respected scheme called Night Out, 
which helps to fund and uh, those pro the, the professional organisations uh, in community buildings. But these initiatives have had to work against the grain of the Licensing Act. The time, the cost and the bureaucracy of getting a licence in a small venue when you're only likely to hold two or three such events a year is simply not worth it. And remember, those venues are almost invariably run by volunteers themselves who have neither the time nor the expertise to, to go through that bureaucratic minefield. Geographically, Wales is 80% rural and characterised by a network of village and church halls. But the entertainment they can host has been curtailed by the 2003 Act. Now, your Lordships will also have heard of the National Eisteddfod. That internationally famous music festival is underpinned by a network of local festivals and Eisteddfodau. The National Youth Eisteddfod, the IRB, has, um, holds preliminary uh, competitions in every part of Wales, and almost every school participates. The tip of the pyramid, you see, is underpinned by a very wide base. It's the community venues that provide the opportunities for a performer's first step in performing music. And without that first step, they won't take the second step, which is to consider earning their living that way. Which means that you lose your source of income for creative industries, as well as the, the cultural tourism sector suffering. And those are enormously important to the Welsh economy because approximately 5% of the economically active workforce work in the cultural sector in Wales, and in Cardiff that is as high as 13%. Now, like the rest of the UK, Wales has suffered from the reduction in the number of licensed premises in terms of premises licensed for alcohol that have gone to seek a license for live music there has been a reduction to about a quarter of those premises seeking a license. And that means, that, of course, the opportunities are very much lower for those wishing to participate. And many of those licenses, as my noble friend has already indicated, already contain other restrictions. <coughs> so I would urge your lordships to look at the evidence very carefully. You see, the live music scene appears to flourish, but it's the upper end and the middle which is flourishing, and it is the uh, small-scale venues which are suffering and declining. As the poorest part of the UK, and often overwhelmed by its, uh, the culture of its very much bigger neighbour, <coughs> Wales has a particular need to develop its own culture and identity and has suffered disproportionately from the impact of the act. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.